So the effect that we just calculated is called time dilation. As a quick reminder, if you had this little setup where you have a flash of light bounce down and go back up, if you ask somebody in the frame of the moving object, what time did they see? That's delta TP. And if you ask somebody uh, that's in the lab frame just watching this happen, what time did they see? They see delta T. And the reason they're not the same, what we found was that delta T is the same as delta TP except this factor, 1 minus V squared over C squared. The reason they're not the same is the one in the proper frame sees it go one distance, and the one in the lab frame sees it goes a, go a different distance, but they see it go the same speed. So the only way it can work out is that the time is different. So this term is sometimes just written gamma. Right? So if we say, you could almost say it written this way, delta T is uh, gamma times delta TP, the proper frame, where gamma is that. And the reason we don't really notice this is because gamma, for everything we experience, is very close to 1. In fact, for this situation, where it's 24 meters per second, gamma is equal to 1.00. That's our gamma. Okay. So it'd be very hard to notice the difference uh, in this case. Although, you can notice it if you either go faster or you can measure really small amounts of time. Because if you simply plot gamma, and you can make your own plot of this, we're just saying if you go faster and faster, V approaching the speed of light, C, from zero, and you plot gamma, put one here, put maybe 10 here, it can go up to infinity. But what you'd find is a plot looks kind of like this. If you say, I can't go faster than C, then it pretty much stays right at one going up very slow until you get real close to the speed of light, and then it goes up like that. So if you're at ordinary speeds down here, it's pretty much one. And if you go really fast, even half the speed of light is pretty close to one. You have to get really high speeds, very close to the speed of light, to see these effects happen significantly. However, even if you're down here in this small, you know, in this typical velocities of airplanes and spacecraft, if you can measure short enough time distances, you can detect it. And sure enough, special relativity has been checked many times all the experiments completely agree. So it is absolutely uh, true. But let's think a little bit about what it does um, to time. So you can think about a clock moving and at V. And if you watch a clock, it may bother you. You don't want to think about the hands. So just think of it this way. Pretend the clock has its own little mirror, right? And its own little light going up and coming down. And just think that's how the clock works. It sends up light, it comes back down, it takes, say, a microsecond or something, and uh, when it detects one of those, it moves the hand a little bit. And it sends it again, and it moves the hand a little bit again. And it sends it again, and it moves the hand a little bit again. So that's what allows the hand to go around and measure time. Imagine a clock that works that way. Well, if you see this clock moving, it's exactly what we talked about here. When some interval of time occurs to the clock, delta P, delta TP, you see one that's longer delta t, right? Delta t equals gamma delta t p. So what it looks like to you is that the clock appears to go slower. Moving clocks appear to run slower. And that may sound a little counterintuitive counter because let's see, it was our time that got dilated. But just think of it this way, imagine the distance the light had to go for the clock to go around once. Right? To me, watching the clock move, I'm going to see the light go like this, a very long distance, right, as it bounces up and down as the clock goes by. I'm going to see the light do that. And I'm going to take the speed of light in that distance and get some amount of time. It takes some amount of time for the clock to go all the way around. But for the clock itself, it's only seeing the light do this. So I would say it goes a shorter amount of time. So I look at the clock and say it's going a shorter distance but it's also at the speed c, so it's not as far. It shouldn't take as long. Right? So I see the clock moving its arm slowly, more slowly. Because to me, it's a long amount of time to take all this distance. But the clock only has to go like this. So its hands move more slowly is one way to think about it. So a moving clock tends to run more slowly. And this leads to the famous way that you can time travel. You just get on a ship, and you take off near the speed of light going away, and those of us on the Earth see you, and we see your clock running slow. You're barely moving, and we're going at normal time. You turn around and you come back, and then you're only aged a couple years, and we're all long gone. 
They were all long off dead thousands of years later, depending on how fast you went. This often leads directly to the twin paradox. People say, well, why did the traveler's time slow down? Why didn't your time slow down? If two clocks pass each other, which one is going slower? So this is where relativity gets really complicated and why we're stopping here is because it's not just time that gets altered. Also, simultaneity gets altered. altered. We can't even agree on when two things happen. Do they happen at the same time? Do they happen at different times? It depends on your frame of reference. Links get changed. It depends on your frame of reference. Uh, links get shorter. For something moving, it actually is physically shorter. And each one of these, you have to have your own little trick with the frames to explain it. This is why examples in special relativity are so contrived. You have to make up this case where it's only time dilation you're seeing, and not simultaneity and length contraction and everything. The basic answer to the twin paradox is the one that will age less is the one that has to accelerate to get back. Right? So the only way this twin is going to come back to the Earth and meet his much older brother or sister is that he had to accelerate, and then you're no longer in an inertial frame for part of the time. And then the details of how you explain that, there's lots of ways to talk about it. But basically, there's no just simple, trivial answer to all of these things. So this has just been your basic introduction to the idea of just time dilation. But now you should be set to go on if you want to read more about special relativity.